Hello, welcome back. This is Calculus by Dr. Oz. Today we're going to evaluate definite integrals. In fact, in, in each case, you have a rational uh, function integrand, and you have somehow like some of the squares popping in the bottom. Uh, to be able to handle uh, these integrals, please uh, refer back to uh, this table here, uh, this table here, where you have integrals involving inverse uh, hyperbolic functions because inverse hyperbolic functions are mostly represented by logarithmic functions. And also, I want to remind you that you know, we have indefinite integrals and definite uh, integrals, and, and, and in indefinite uh, integrals, we generally find the antiderivative of the integrand. And, and when we convert that to a definite integral, then we're using, uh, we're, we're having limits, right, upper and lower limits, and, and that's mostly us using a fundamental theorem of calculus, and the result in general is a number, not a function, okay? And most of the time we refer the indefinite, the, sorry, the definite integral concept to the area concept, and as you see that uh, all of the functions, uh, integrands provided us in the integrals uh, are, are non-negative within their integration uh, integrating in interval or interval of integration. Uh, so that means that we can always refer uh, uh, these integrals to the area between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to sort of like relate that in the video, uh, uh, just giving you some heads up. Uh, but, but mostly I'm going to use that table that I showed you a second ago and, and also I'm going to relate uh, the outputs of these integrals to the area uh, concept at the end. All right, let's get started. All right, let's look at part A. Um, this is the definite integral from one to five, one over x uh, radical four plus x squared. As always, uh, I'm gonna handle uh, this problem, this is a definite integration problem, but we first have to find the antiderivative of the integrand. So I'm gonna do that evaluation separately, okay? four plus x squared dx. So let's first handle this problem and use the tools of this section. And in fact, the table uh, that we were provided earlier uh, to us uh, to sort of like uh, take care of this the indefinite integral. So this integral looks like uh, uh, the integral, uh, the last integral here, right? So du over u a squared uh, minus uh, u squared. Um, in fact, it's plus version of that. So I'm going to go with the plus version of that. So I'm going to circle the plus version uh, of this. And, 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 and u equals x, apparently. And, and let's go back and check what a should be here. Uh, so let's see. Um, so here, uh, let me just rewrite uh, this integral as integral from 1 to 5, 1 over x, uh, 2 squared plus uh, x squared dx. So that makes a to be 2. That makes a to be 2 and u to be x, so that du equals dx. I don't even need to uh, have a separate uh, u substitution applied to that because it's already in the form, provided in the formula. So let me just uh, go back and grab this formula uh, to my slide, and I'll continue from there. There we go. I just copied everything down here. So I'm going to plug uh, a, well, substitute a uh, equals 2 and u equals uh, x. So negative 1 half ln of um, 2 plus radical 4 plus x squared, all divided by absolute value of x, right? So absolute value of x plus uh, the integrating constant, okay? So that takes care of the in indefinite uh, integral here. And then uh, when I copy this all the way down to, uh, the, down to the left hand side to evaluate this definite integral, I don't need to carry forward uh, the integrating constant here. So because I'm going to use the fundamental theorem calculus. So all I'm going to do is just to copy this guy down here to 4 plus x squared divided by absolute value of x with the lower limit being 1 and upper limit being uh, 5, okay? And now I'm going to plug in the upper limit, ln of uh, 2 plus 5 squared is uh, 25, so 29, okay? 
divided by absolute value of 5 is just 5, okay, minus ln of 2 plus, um, when you plug in 1, uh, that makes the inner side of the radical 5, radical 5 divided by 1, okay, and if you want, you can just leave it as is, but I want to mention about the uh, uh, physics meaning of this definite integral. Uh, to start with, uh, this integral here is uh, is is a non-negative, uh, uh, the integral of a non-negative function. Okay, so this uh, here, the integrand is a non-negative. You can go ahead and plot this function for x min uh, equals 1 and x max equals 5. Okay, go ahead and please uh, use your TA84 to graph uh, this function and you will have a graph of this sort, so the blue graph is what you're gonna see uh, in your end. Let me just switch over so that you can actually see the full picture here. Okay, so, um, and then uh, this definite integral is from one to five, so we are talking about the area of a region uh, that is made up by this blue curve here, and the x-axis as well as the lines x equals 1 and x equals 5, right? So we, if, if, if you ever want to calculate the area of this region, this is the integral that you would like to evaluate. And in fact, we did, and we got this result, and you can go ahead and use your TI-84 to get an approximate value of that even though you don't need it. But this value here, whatever that is, is, is the value of this uh, area here, okay? But, think about this question in that regard, okay? So always like definite integrals uh, might be related to uh, areas of regions between the curve and the x-axis. Here, here we go, I'm making that uh, relation here uh, for you to visualize the meaning of the definite integral. All right, so I'm gonna finish this video right here and I'm gonna continue part B in my next video. I'll see you there, bye.